Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD with a comparison of the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 4S. Now I'm sure you guys have heard the spiel, it's thinner, it's faster, it's 20% lighter, but a lot of the blah 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 blah, but what actual real world advantages does the iPhone 5 have over the iPhone 4S? If you guys have watched my iPhone 5 review, that was actually one of the first impressions that I had upon picking up the iPhone 5 was how light it was. Even though they can spit all these numbers at us, it actually does feel considerably lighter than the iPhone 4S. Alongside the form factor change, we now see the removal of the 30 pin connector on the iPhone 4S, which we've seen forever, and the introduction of the lightning port, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass because now you need adapters. But it is cool due to the fact that it is all digital, so no matter which way you plug it in, it just goes and it just works, which is pretty neat. In addition to that, the headphone jack is no longer at the top of the phone like on the 4S. It is now on the bottom left-hand corner on the iPhone 5. Very similar to what we've seen on the iPod Touch or something like the Galaxy Nexus. But I do like that change. It is more convenient having it down there as opposed to on top. Now, one of the three major changes to the iPhone 5 is obviously the bigger screen size. It's 4 inches as opposed to 3.5 inches on the iPhone 4S. There's not a huge jump in screen resolution. We saw 960 by 640 on the iPhone 4S, and now we see 1136 by 640 on the iPhone 5. So it's a little hard to tell as far as extra screen real estate. Here's a look at calendars. Not sure if you can tell there, but more noticeably, if you're looking at movies or videos on there, you don't see that letterboxing where you would see that on the iPhone 4S. Now it is the full screen filled up on the iPhone 5. So this will probably give you the better example of what the bigger screen size will actually do for you. Now the A6 processor in the iPhone 5 is actually a ton faster than the iPhone 4S. You can see in Geekbench, it more than doubles the score. And I actually wanted to give you guys an example of how that equates to in terms of performance. So what I did was exported a 30 second 1080p video clip in iMovie. And here's a little example so you can see which finishes faster. So you can see the iPhone 5 definitely was faster than the iPhone 4S. It wasn't night and day where we're like, oh my god, that was so much faster than the 4S. But a lot of that performance is going to go towards gaming smoothness and filling in that extra screen real estate. Now, in addition to the bigger screen and the faster processor, the other big change in the iPhone 5 is the addition of LTE. With the iPhone 4S for Verizon, you could usually expect anywhere from 1 to 4 megabits per second on their 3G speeds. AT&T was a little faster because it was technically HSPA+, so I've seen it as high as maybe 10 or 11 megabits per second. But if you do have LTE, I've seen the speeds up to 50 megabits per second down and as high as 30 megabits per second up. So there's definitely a drastic difference there. Now, while all those changes were huge, probably the least biggest difference between the two is the cameras. They both still shoot at 8 megapixels. They both shoot at 1080p. Yes, the iPhone 5 was improved, but it's not drastic in terms of night and day differences between the two. So I'm going to close this video out with some photos and some video footage between the two. And you guys can check them out for yourselves and kind of make that determination if the iPhone 5 is really that much better. At the end of this video, as well as an annotation in the top left hand corner, I have a link to my full iPhone 5 review just in case you want to see that phone covered in detail. Aside from that, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later.